What's she eating? <laughs> Looks a little chippy to me. Better hurry up and finish up or, or the comments are going to be spammed with don't eat on the podcast. <coughs> they can be damned. They can The comment damned. section. Hey, turn your mic up. Uh, mic check, so, mic check. Too loud. I don't know. You seem a little quiet. Maybe it's, maybe it's me. Uh, talk again. You know, I'm a little echoey in this, uh, in this room. Yeah. No, you're good right there. You're good. I think I just need to turn my stuff up. W- what are you eating for lunch? I had uh, Minute Maid rice and canned salmon. Canned salmon. Hey, I- I'm glad you actually mentioned uh, salmon. When's the last time you had uh, a tuna fish sandwich? <laughs> last week. I've been eating tuna fish really? sandwiches every day. Oh, yeah. I haven't had a tuna fish sandwich in years. And then yesterday, um, it was like in the morning. I don't know why. I was like, no, it was the day before. I was digging in my, my cabinet and I was looking for tuna fish. I just had a craving for a tuna fish sandwich. There's no tuna fish in my house. Very next day, Kindle, first time in years, goes and gets tuna fish. I forgot how freaking good a tuna fish sandwich is. So those of you guys that are local in Arizona, let me give you guys a life hack. <clears throat> Bosa Donuts in Arizona, the best tuna fish sandwich I've ever had in my life. Really? You get Bosa's it, a tu- phenomenal. Yeah, you get a tuna on toast with everything. They put jalapenos, pickles, uh, mayonnaise, mustard, onions, it's lettuce, like tuna tomatoes. Melt. Nope. Cold tuna, oh. cheese, okay. all those toppings on, on toast. It's the best. It's the best ever. Man. I, uh, no, I got a little nostalgic because when I was a broke 19 year old, 18 year old, when I first started training with you, I couldn't afford anything. I lived on my own. I I was living by myself, no roommates. And so all I could afford was uh, tuna. So I'd make tuna and then I would eat it throughout the entire week. So I have week old tuna with mayonnaise sitting in my fridge and just eating it. I think my immune system never been higher. And so I I was like, (laughs) I'm getting a little bit nostalgic. Tuna sounds so good to me. So I made tuna melts like two weeks in a row. Now, here's the real question. The pouch or a can? Can always. Oh, you're a savage. Nothing but the pouch. I won't touch anything but a pouch of tuna. What are you, a kangaroo? (laughs) I might be, but I don't want a canned tuna. The other thing, so first of all, the pouch tuna tastes fresher to me. The other thing is having to like drain the water out of a, a can of tuna and then getting that tuna smell in your hands for the rest of the day. That's horrible. I feel like it gives me an advantage when I'm training. It might. It definitely might. Now they lift up their, their neck and I slide right in. You slide it in. Um, among other things slid in by Brandon over the course of a week. But the real question, so we've got tuna out of the way and I need your, I need a legit answer here, Brandon. I need a good one. So you're done. So you're eating, you're picking your teeth. I need you to cut your nail, to bite your nails, um, and then put your foot up at some point throughout this podcast so we can thoroughly offend everyone. All right. Now, Zuck or Elon? Everyone's riding Zuck. I got Elon. He's way bigger. Way bigger. I see. I, is he? But Zuckerberg actually trains jujitsu right now. I don't know, man. Elon's way bigger, and he could use a. What is Neuralink to learn martial arts in a day? He's going to be Hickson in a day. So I don't think that's close. <laughs> um, man, you know, somebody we know uh, got a DM from Zuck. I think it was yesterday or today and showed me um, about some, some thoughts and ideas on some situations. So I'm curious to Give see Give me one that... guess. I could, uh, I could tell you who it is. Nope. No guesses. No guesses. No I, could, I would know who it is instantly. Nope. 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 <laughs> No, nope, no guesses. Um, all, all I'm saying is Zuck rented out the uh, Apex to watch Mackenzie Dern. So give me one guess. I could guess out of entire Fight Ready who, who the one person was with the DM. Uh, one, I didn't say it was Fight Ready. And two, no guesses. I mean, there's just no guesses. That's not what we're doing. It's not Bobby but, Moffitt. It is Bobby <laughs> Moffitt. You guessed it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so <clears throat> we had a good week last week. You put the promo of a lifetime out there for the show last week. Oh, that was a good one. 
Yeah, but I thought we were I thought we were gonna hit it. We were one one short of a uh, a moonshot. Somebody was like, "Man, what a salesman you are! You put out a bunch of minus thousands." Like, man, we had to deal with what we had to deal with, and we were one pick short. Like the one that I said is free money. It was free money. Everybody hit, yeah. no problem. First round knockouts, all good stuff. And then we were Rene Rodriguez short of the absolute moonshot. Like, hey, I'm not working tomorrow or the rest of the year, next few years, kind of kind of week. So, all right, relax, man. And then we yeah, did good it, on fear. We did good on everything. So relax. Yeah. The other thing, that you're not the one that makes the matchups and the odds. You're the one who's like, hey, these people are going to win. And if there's five people on a fight card and you pick five of them to win and they happen to be minus a thousand, that's not you're doing. I mean, it's freaking. No, but I, I get it. Whatever. though. I mean, like in the gambling, you got the plus minus EV. Yeah. And parlaying the UFC, these big favorites. But the UFC on, on the picks that I put out, the only one I got wrong was Zalgis. Um, which I mean, I don't know, Zalgis. Uh, maybe I, maybe I over respect his abilities because I, I just I feel like he's better than his record shows. But I had uh, Macy Barber plus one seventy, Ricci at minus one thirty. I think she was at. And I had somebody else on there too uh, that hit uh, on the UFC side. I think everything but Zalgis, and then one over two and a half hit. So I, I think we did pretty well. I think a, a lot of people message us, actually, you know, I'm going to do something I've never done before, and I'm going to share our screen, my screen. Let's see how this, uh, how this does. Let me see. Um, yeah, we're going to share this. Here's a, a ticket that one of our guys, can you see this? Um, yeah. So uh, $300 to 11800 and then we had uh, – here's, here's just like a quick video of some stuff. I mean we had like – it should be scrolling through right now. Just ticket after ticket after ticket cash this week um, for $25 for a month. Um, I, I think people are pretty happy about stuff, and I'm pretty happy with, with what we did. So, um, you know, we, we did pretty well there. There's, there's a screenshot there. So, um, Or, you know, whatever. You guys saw what it was. But it, it was pretty good. Now, this week, are we doing – I think we're just doing the main card, right? Well, okay. You pissed me off. Like, <clears throat> we talk about, okay, we're just doing the main card. And then you text me and you're like, hey, I'm ready for the full thing or just the main card, whatever you want. And I'm like, make up your freaking mind. So I, I think I think what we should do, as long as you have studied the full card, let's do the full card. Someone's like, oh, you're putting stuff behind a paywall. It's like, dude, we're not doing that on purpose. I'd love to give you guys as much free stuff as we can. It's not like this is like – top secret crazy stuff uh we're just busy that's the only reason yeah, that that's the only we're reason about exactly we just didn't have but if so you study thing, it and you know it let's do it let's yeah, do it i was asking you because i didn't know if you had time to study everything that's what what i was doing because normally i wouldn't but i was sick this weekend so i just didn't do anything like all sunday like kindle was going over to family and doing family stuff i just stayed home and watched tape from the time i woke up uh, i took a quick break to help finish her with a puzzle. <laughs> it was like this puzzle she's been working on for like two weeks. It was like a, a, it wasn't crazy. I think it was a thousand piece puzzle, but it was all like one color. Like you could not even tell the difference. So anyway, so I helped her finish that. And then I went back to tape when, when she went off to, to family stuff. But uh, yeah, I, I just, that was, that was the only reason. And the only reason you guys, why we're going behind uh, putting some of the stuff behind a paywall isn't again for anything other than by the time we put this out, we probably won't have time to watch all of the prelims. And so the prelim stuff we'll put out throughout the week while we have time, you know, and, and I've already let's, been doing let's that do it like this. Patreon. Let's talk about it before each show. And if we have the time and if we can, let's do out, let's put out a full show as usual. And if we don't have the time, then we'll hit the main card or main card plus one or two fights extra. And we'll do it Done. like that. I think that's Done. good. Done. I like that. Sunday's now, like my day off and I like to swim yeah. and lift and, well, it's my day with my family. You know, I watch film and I, I do stuff. So I try to get to it. So, okay, I'm down with that. I'm down with that. Um, before we get into this card, you guys, I sent out our first newsletter. So uh, if you want a free pick that, you know, free pick, uh, what else we do? A recap um, and just some news. You know, I, I think I did a landmine of the week this week, which we'll get to on the podcast a little bit. Um, if we have any tips or, or any news or anything coming up, we'll 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 do that, you know, but we want to be able to give you guys uh, just some more information. You know, we're not going to be spammy at one a week. We'll, we'll come out and it'll just be some, some tips and picks and information, stuff like that. So uh, sign up to the newsletter 
that'll be in the uh, bio as well or in the description. Of course, you know, join us on the Patreon. Like, subscribe, like us on YouTube. That's the least you can do. If you do nothing else, you can like us on YouTube. And then who's that one prick that keeps just coming over to tell us, like, I told you so every time? Like, just stop posting and stop watching us. Somebody in the comments of the last one was like, see, I, he's like, I, I really disagree with Emmett. And I'm like, okay, sometimes we get it right, sometimes we get it wrong. And then he comes back after the show. See, I told you, I can't believe you picked that. And I was like, I wasn't screaming any. See, this is what I, he's just like arguing with himself. Like, don't be a twat. Go well, I think we both said it. Like, like, obviously, this, this is going to feel like a change in the guard fight. I think for me, I said, I'm not going to touch it just because uh, I, I, I feel and I know that Ilya is going to win. But <clears throat> I just thought the line was too high. And obviously, it wasn't. I mean, he, he looked great in the fight. I didn't get to watch the fight, but I heard he looked phenomenal. And it was a crazy beat down. The scorecards yeah. say as much. Um, so, I mean, I guess the line wasn't wide. It just wasn't for me. It's not something that I yeah. played personally. I know everybody had a lot tied to Taporia. And, man, he looked good. So, you know, He that's, looked good. That's all he I did saying. all the right stuff. But there was I, – I could see Emmett winning. And, he, hey, look, he, he passed the test. He didn't get chinned. That's what we needed to see. He did all the right stuff. Um, whatever. Uh, all right. Let's go through – Man, I man, let's fly through these because I don't want to spend. This is the middle of the day, you guys, so we, we kind of ran and got some time to to jump on stuff. So I don't want to go nuts on too much details on on each fight just just for time. But man, let's get into this. We have Guram Kutiladze and Elvis Brenner. Um, can you believe that? You know, off the top of your head, I'm sure you do. Do you know Kutiladze's record in the UFC? What is he like? One and two or something? No, he's one and one. He's had two fights. Like an amazing fight with Demir Ismagulov and an amazing fight with Mateus Gamrat. Like the dude is so phenomenal. And then he just has two fights in the UFC. I can't believe that. But his striking is phenomenal. Uh, his cardio is phenomenal. His grappling is phenomenal. His, especially his wrestling defense that we saw against uh, Mateus is, is phenomenal. Um, Finishes with low kicks. He's got a ton of experience. He has good cardio. He has everything that you would ever want in an MMA fighter. Uh, I guess the only knock that I would say on, on Kutiladze at all is sometimes he's almost just so good that he just doesn't go in for the finish. I would like to see him really like try to kill people because um, I think he could and I think he has a cardio to do it. That's the closest thing to a knock that I, that I can really get on him. And then we have Elvis Brenner on the other side who is – you know, he's fine. He, he's good. He, he beat Sukagov. Um, but one, I think I could have given that to Sukagov. I was rewatching the fight and I was like, eh, it was, it was a toss up, but, and, but really Sukagov, I thought lost that fight versus Brenner winning that fight. Sukagov just stood there, like plotted in. He normally is so in and out and he was just in front of him. And I think he was trying to like faint and pull and counter but he was just a little bit too short to do it with just standing there. And I, and I think, I don't know if he had, he just had a bad performance. He looked a little off. He wasn't as, he just didn't look as intense or maybe they took Brenner as seriously. Um, but with Guram, I, I think the one, I think Guram is just better everywhere, but I think just somebody that tall, I think is going to be able to push and pull Brenner and get him to throw and counter man outside of some hail Mary craziness here. I mean, I can't see a, a world in which Kuchaladze doesn't uh, win this pretty easily. Yeah, Brenner's tape was not good pre UFC, and then he looked a lot better, obviously, in that in that debut. Um, he's not bad. He's 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 a lot better than I than I thought he was. Uh, man, I wanted to go into this looking for the way that the uh, that Brenner has a chance here and and wins. And not necessarily that it's this insane, insane blowout. I just think that Garam's a little bit longer, a little bit sharper, a little bit cleaner, puts things together. And there's maybe a little bit more of a thought process. Um, watching his fight with Demir, man, <clears throat> I had a, a lot of money on Demir in that fight. And my, my, my betting bias told me that Demir won that fight. I, he didn't win that fight. And Garam looked a lot better than I, than I remember him looking. I just, I remembered him being so low volume and just like not doing a lot, but he wasn't, he, he was kind of always throwing, always pressuring. He looked really good. Second round, obviously Demir, uh, 
came on strong and won that. But man, his cardio, his power, everything held up throughout the fight. So keeping this short and simple, yeah, obviously Garam here. Now, do you like uh, do you like a finish or do you like an over on it? Um, I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not sure. Yeah, I kind of am leaning. I, I I could. He's just that good that I could see a finish, but I'm kind of leaning over one and a half just for for what it's worth on that. So, all right. Next up, we have Alexander Romanov and Blagoy Ivanov. Um, guys, a lot of cardio, a lot of volume. Let's go, Brandon. What do you got? Um, so I already have a play on Ivanov here and it's not because I feel married to Ivanov. I figured the number would get smaller, uh, maybe as an, over, I don't even know if it's an overreaction, but as a reaction to, uh, to Romanov's cardio from that last fight, man, that was bad. It was bad, bad. Like, like gassed faster than usual. Usually he's got seven, eight minutes in him. That one was bad, bad. Cause he couldn't get him down. So I, I think the game plan has been written, obviously, to beat Romanov. Now, the thing that actually wouldn't surprise me is uh, Blagoy getting knocked out. I think that you know, if he if he's planning so much for the wrestling here, Romanov doesn't have the worst striking. It's powerful. He he charges forward. He throws with heat. I could see Blagoy getting actually knocked out here. But um, man, I mean, to get out outside of round one and Blagoy can uh, defend a few takedowns, you know, then then we know how this is going to go. This guy literally willing to kill himself if he doesn't get the finish uh romanov so i have a play on blagoy but i i hate betting romanov fights because it's just that it's that time bomb does he finish before he gasses and if he doesn't then he's going to get finished or he's going to lose so uh, i think romanov technically is better everywhere bigger stronger more aggressive better technique but does he uh does he implode you know so i have a play on ivanov don't love this fight either direction See, I'm on the other side of that here. I think I think people are putting a little bit too much into Romanov's gas tank because, uh, you know, I think the – say if this goes to a decision, you kind of assume Romanov is winning the first round. I mean, that's just – he's going to go out there guns blazing, grabbing people, slamming. You kind of assume he's going to lose that third round. And then does he do enough in the second round to, to kind of do, do what he needs to do? But here's the thing is Blagoy – might be the lowest volume fighter on the UFC roster at this point. He's short. He doesn't initiate anything. He literally just sits there and waits and waits and waits. And then when you throw at him, he throws three pieces back at you. And he, he does a really good job in the pocket and going. But he doesn't do – he does not attack. And so you have Romanov who wins round one and he's pretty tired going into round two. Um, whenever he wants a break – he can just sit back and take his break because Blagoy isn't there pushing and pressing the volume and going. And Romanov is, like you said, his striking is not the worst. It just looks kind of bad because he strikes when he's really tired. But he's a little bit longer than I think we give him credit for. And I think if he just sits back and throws a little jab, a overhand every once in a while to keep Blagoy at bay, he can regain his cardio a little bit until he's ready to shoot. If he can't shoot and get the takedown in round two, I don't think it matters. I think he pushes Ivanov to the fence and leans on him, and I think he can steal um, just the moments by doing that. Ivanov is so reactionary. Like, he just – he hasn't looked better and better over the years. He looks like he's just there over the years. And Romanov – Well, dude's like 80 years old now. He's, he's 24. <laughs> He's just, he's just Russian. I think he's actually 17. But no, I mean, I, I think he's 36, but, but he's actually not as old as you would think. I think he's 36. Romanov's like 30. Um, I, I think Romanov, you get a guy like Volkov, who's as, as tall as the Empire State Building, defending some takedowns and then beating on you. I think that's a little bit different. I, I think we're, we're looking more at the Tibura fight with uh, Romanov. And... He did all right round two. I mean, that was at elevation. It wasn't 7,000 feet, but it was a little bit at elevation. And Tybura does more than Ivanov. And uh, I could see Romanov actually, like you said, getting the finish in round one just by swinging and going hard. E even though Blago has never been finished in the UFC. Or I, I could see him doing enough in, in two rounds to get that. Um, and, and yeah, I, I think I like Romanov here. And I probably like the over one and a half. Over. See, okay, if it goes past round one. I think it's going to to the final bell. 
here's my only problem with, with <clears throat> kind of everything that you just said. That's a coach's game plan for a fighter like Romanov, but Romanov is the the apest ape of all apes. And he's in a, you, you don't know what his game plan is. You could tell him, hey, sit back. And that would be the smart thing to do and just, you know, play this low volume game. That would be the smart thing to do, but you can't count on Romanov to do the smart thing. He, he did it against he, Tybura. He did that against <laughs> Tybura when he was tired. Tybura is just longer and more active than Ivanov. So go look at round two of Tybura and Romanov. And I think that's very similar to round two of Ivanov and Romanov, except for Tybura is 20 times more active than Ivanov. Yeah, front kicks, million volume. All right. Yeah. I, I think you convinced me. I, I'll be on Romanov here. I just played early number just to try to kind of beat the, the move. I haven't checked. I probably did. But all right, cool. Okay. Romanov. All right, next up we have Joe Anderson, Brito, and Weston Wilson. Oh, geez. Um, man, Weston Wilson should not have gotten this call. I wrote this on the Patreon. You guys will see it. This guy got the call over our guy, Bobby Moffitt, who you actually mentioned earlier. Um, Brito's original opponent pulled out. We put Bobby's name in for this fight. Go look at Bobby's record and this guy's record. This guy has never beaten anybody decent. He has lost via Oma Pilata. He is beyond not suitable for the UFC. He's got a lead high kick, which is pretty fast. And that's where his accolades end. Um, and then you have Brito, who's good. I mean, he's a bit of an ape, guesses out a little bit. We've already seen a very, 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 very poor man's version of this fight play out with... Um, um, who's your boy from, uh, um, East coast, um, Bill Austrian Algeo. wonder boy. Oh yeah. Bill Algio. So in, in Brito did fine getting on the inside, making his way through, getting the grappling exchanges going, landing some punches. And then of course, Algio, Algio, there's that, but that's all I needed to see to know that he's going to throw a couple big bombs get his way on the inside against Weston Wilson and take him down and choke him out. So, I, I mean, I, I think this is a Brito fight. Easy, easy, easy. Um, I, I don't think Weston Wilson will win a fight in the UFC. Uh, okay. I didn't get to tape Weston. I, I remember watching, uh, pretty sure I watched a Weston fight for something. Sorry. My, uh, Jeez, my thing barely works. Yeah, I watched the Ishihara fight, and I watched the Tyrick fight. Um, yeah, I, I mean, Brito's been a lot better than I had thought. I thought he was going to completely death gas, and he showed a lot of vulnerabilities. But honestly, the Algeo fight, and a lot of those fights have impressed me, where he just fights hard until the final bell. I think the cardio with him is almost overstated because he's just willing to walk through it and fight through the exhaustion uh, hard. So, yeah, I think Brito should be good here, and the price probably reflects that. Definitely reflects that. But what is Brito? Do you have it up? Uh, what's Brito by submission? I think that's the play here. All right. Let me see. My, uh, for some reason, Google Chrome does not work on this. I, I got a brand new laptop and it doesn't work. If I pull up anything on Google Chrome, it freezes my laptop. Stupid. It, it, did you get a Mac? Yeah, I have like 10 Macs and they all suck. Oh, you um, shut your whore mouth. There's nothing that will ever go wrong with a Mac, except for mine actually ruined all my stuff the other day. And I lost yeah, everything. What are you talking about? But anyway, um, yes. Yeah, so all right. Joe I mean, Anderson Brito's Brito by sub is plus 170. So it's not a ton of meat That's on the bone bad. there. It's, hey, that is not a bad plus money for it, it, it's either going to, it's Brito inside the distance, Brito by KO or Brito by submission. Like which one, you know, kind of, you take the easy path, Brito inside the distance. It's probably only minus 600 or something at this point, but Brito by submission, woo, plus money. I bet you that's, it's not a bad one. All right, let's move yeah, on. Brito um, inside the US, distance minus 425. Even that's not the worst. I mean, considering, um, because it's going to be Brito inside the distance here. Um, all right, you have two up right now because uh, I don't think my wife lets me tape women's MMA. I think that's how this works, except for the, the main card. I, I was able to tape that. So anyway, um, Ivana Pet Petrovic, Luana, Carolina, who you got? Who's winning? What are we doing? 
Well, geez, they brought uh, Ivana Petrovic in from uh, from Aries FC, and man, they had to give her the absolute lowest, lowest, lowest tier on the roster in Luana Carolina. And weirdly, I still think there's probably value in Luana, Luana Carolina. It's just really tough to back somebody like Luana because she's just awful. But man, what does Ivana have for her? I mean, let's take a look. I'll, I'll be really honest. Uh, the Wozniak win is a good win because I've been very high on Evelina Wozniak for a long time, but in her fights, it's like, she just, she's kind of regressing. She used to be so, so good. And it looks like she's just regressing. She kind of falls over all the time. She's letting a girl with no wrestling get on top of her and dominate her for rounds, not standing up, not striking with her. Um, man, I, I just think a bet on, on, uh, Ivana is a bad bet here. Even if she wins, it's just like, it's not a good proposition. I don't think she's a very good fighter. She doesn't have very good wrestling. Her striking is pretty non-existent. But, you know, a bet on Luana Carolina, probably a donation, right? In my mind, the way this fight probably plays out is uh, Petrovic gets some kind of crazy thing and ends up on top and ends up winning the round that way or getting the submission, right? But Luana showed good takedown defense, at least in the second round against uh, Lupi, who's much better wrestler than uh than uh Petrovic here. I don't know. This this is just a bad low level fight. For me, I, I just want to avoid it because Carolina obviously has deficiencies in the grappling and Petrovic is going to grapple. And Petrovic has deficiencies in the striking. And I'm not sure that Luana Carolina has good enough striking to uh to exploit that. So who knows? Where where are we at with that? I don't want to pay minus two thirty whatever Petrovic is and then you know Carolina is just not enough meat on the bone for me to take that that underdog shot. So, ah, uh, uh, man, I don't I don't know where to go. I'll pick Carolina, and uh, but as a as realistic for a bet for here, I'm gonna pass on this fight. Okay. What about the next one, Yana Santos and Carol Rosa? Well, let's see what the odds are looking like because Yana feels as good as done. I don't know. She I don't yeah. know why she's still fighting. She looks. You'd think that she would look better being with an, another fighter, and man, I think she looks she looks done, doesn't she? Yeah, she looks pretty done. So I, I guess the things that I will say about this fight: Carol Rosa is so slow. Um, she's got very good hands, but she's just so freaking slow, and she's got those dinosaur hips. I said it when she fought Sarah McMahon, and I feel like we were the only. I don't know if you picked her. I know I did uh, Sarah McMahon over Carol Rosa because everyone was so high on the Carol Rosa train. And I was like, no, Gosh, I, she got I think these... I picked against her and you were right on that one. I was 100% wrong. Yeah. yeah, and I was just like, she's got these big, fat dinosaur hips. She's not going to get up when she gets taken down and that's exactly how the fight played out. The thing with Yana is Yana is very athletic. Um, she really is. She, she looks strong, athletic. She's sturdy. She's a decent kickboxer. But... <clears throat> Her technique a lot of times goes out the window as she's just trying to run forward and cage push and just do weird stuff that's not technical. I think she could be really good if she had a coach to refine her, but she's just kind of all over the place where Carol Rosa at least has a method to her madness, right? She's jabbing, coming forward, putting volume together, clean hands. Um, it's kind of hard to worry about the volume here. If uh, I'm sorry, the uh, the grappling here, if Jan is not able to even get it down to begin with, and Carol's a big chick. Uh Man, I think one fifty minus one fifty one on Carol Rosa's. It's a good generous line. I, I I like that one. I like that spot there. Okay, uh, next up we have Kevin Lee and Renat Fakradinov. Uh, this is a weird one to me because of, and it's all contingent on Kevin Lee. Kevin Lee was cut from the UFC, and looked progressively worse in his fights again and again and again. His cardio looked worse. He looked like he was quitting. Didn't look like he wanted to fight anymore. They cut him. And then did you watch the Diego Sanchez fight in Eagle FC? Yeah, I did. Kevin Lee might have looked worse in that win than he did in any UFC fight against 112-year-old Diego who was backing up and was almost a heavy bag. Um, yeah, but he tore his knee in the first round and f went to the finish line. Is that what happened? Is that what happened with Kevin Lee? Yeah, he like tore his ACL in the first round and then fought the whole fight with it. Okay, okay. See, I didn't know that. And so he's coming off that ACL. All right. That, that makes it way, way, way better. That, that definitely helps out quite a bit. Because um, I was curious. He looked so bad there. Now, him being over at Kill Cliff and then him um, 
do you know like he kind of recently has talked about being Muslim. Do you know if it's a recent conversion or if he just recently is public about it? Because it's kind of a big deal. Okay, why is it a big deal? Because it shows a a level of commitment and change beyond just okay, I'm gonna do better. I'm better. Saying that you're better, you know, you gotta kind of have to live a lifestyle. You've got to live up to a lifestyle. You're you're doing things at a at a deeper level than just talking about them. Um, and, and the guys who are Muslim, they're not drinking. They're not out partying. Um, and so that that is a thing to me. I, I think honestly, I think being Muslim or Mormon or something, you know, a, a a religion where you don't drink, where you don't party, where you abstain from things, I think is probably very good as a fighter because you you're just naturally not out doing things that others might do that would distract you. Um, but you know, that's that's my own take on it. Do you think Kill Cliff? With, is good for him or bad for him? Because I think he's probably getting a lot of really good work, but is it work that he needs or is it, um, is it really a, a mental coach? Well, I mean, I say that because we know that Renat is going to come in. He's going to be big. He's going to wrestle. He's going to be in his face and he will fight for 15 minutes. And I just don't know that Kevin Lee will. I think Kevin Lee is boxing is great. I think he has really good wrestling. He's always had suspect cardio. Um, his ability to get the fight to the ground and then take backs is actually really good. Um, defensively grappling and defensively, kind of defensively everything, he is not great. He's a good hammer. He is not the best nail. Um, and, and then, you know, you're just coming off a layoff and, and you're coming back. Does he have that drive? So that's what I wonder. I, I think if Kevin Lee comes out and looks um, if Kevin Lee shows up and looks amazing, I think Kevin Lee can really beat Renat up. Um, but but I the question marks of Kevin Lee make me go, I've got to go Renat, who at least I know is going to show up and fight for 15 minutes and at least has good cardio with very little conviction of the question marks of Lee. Yeah, I, I just know that he's been calling out the Dagestanis and the Russian wrestlers for years. So it just makes me wonder if like in the gym, he is excellent at defending that style and beating up that style, right? And counter wrestling. A lot of times when we see Kevin get super tired, it's because he's offensively wrestling. And as he's moved up a weight class, he can't move these big bodies for three straight rounds and 15 minutes and strike and, and do everything it takes to put together a, a solid 15 minutes of fighting, right? He's He's a good hammer when he's the hammer, but not so much when, when the other person won't accept it. Um, I, I give him the advantage on the feet, although not by a ton, right? He's, he's powerful, but he's kind of low volume. Uh, let's guys kind of stalk him from time to time. And especially a guy like Renat, who's going to, you know, fake the wrestling and throw and, and then, and then be on him like glue. Um, I, I think Kevin might have a, a few good exchanges in round one. Maybe he looks amazing in round one, but I think as round two and round three start to come, I, I see him fading off kind of like he always has um, with Renat, just that pressure style and Renat's top game is really good. So man, I, I wouldn't call Renat a lock by any means. And I've seen that a ton this week. I mean, geez, if anyone's going to bust the parlay, I'd say Kevin is probably the most talented guy to bust, bust a parlay of those big favorites. Um, but based on available tape, you know, the, the recent film and the just activity. Uh, I'm going to go Renat on this one. Okay. I think that's a, I, I think that's the only play. It's either Renat or, or you just don't play it. Cause you don't know. Um, I, honestly use it as a tape to see what Kevin looks like coming back. Um, you know, after the time away from the UFC. All right. Next up, we've got nurse Sultan Razabayev and Bruno Fedeta. Uh, who do you got here? I can't wait. Um, yeah, let, let's try to make all these quick. We, we don't need to spend a ton of time on all these, but I, uh, I got Bruno and I think decently confident. Um, just watching uh, Nurselton's last fight. Good thing about this guy, Nurselton. We have a lot of film and a lot of footage of him. Um, his striking is decent-ish, but he's slow. Um, God, he's not putting incredible combinations together. And then he gets taken down with a gust of wind, like, like literally zero defense and zero anything. But the one thing that was most alarming to me was, uh, in his last fight, he finished it by arm bar and you watch his arm bar, his legs are straight up in the air. Um, which, you know, going back to Vanessa Demopoulos fight when she fought Silvana Gomez Juarez, right? She got 
knocked out. She was flash knocked out. And then she put, she, you know, locked on the arm bar and her legs were straight up in the air. And, you know, anyone who's done jujitsu for any period of time knows like that's horrible because you get stacked up and people pull their arm out and it's just incorrect technique, right? You're supposed to bite down on the back of the neck. The fact that the dude finished that with those legs up in the air, first of all, speaks to the level of competition and, or, uh, she's work, fight, fix, fight crazy, but it just shows overall lack of, of grappling and knowledge. You know, he might be in Philly with the Philly boys, but man, not all guys are, are built the same and they're not all built equal. Sean Brady and, uh, and Pat Sabatini have a rest round when they go with this dude. Um, I just think Bruno, man, I said this last time, Bruno has not showed us anything that wasn't good. He showed us good explosive wrestling, good top game, great power in his punches, good technique standing. I think the one thing that everyone kept counting on Bruno was like, okay, well, how is he round two when he, when he doesn't put somebody away? It's like, we still don't know. Cause the dude's still taking everybody out, including RoboCop, right? Who's a very good opponent. Um, I think Bruno is, is, is better everywhere. Um, I, I think he probably even uses his grappling, takes the dude down, gets on top, hammer fists and, and puts him away. I, I like Bruno in this spot here. Um, Ruzabayev is a faker fighter than Ihor Pretoria was when he came in. Like this dude's not real. I don't believe that his last few fights were real. Like, you know, I, I think those are works. And if they're not works, that's the worst level of competition ever. I mean, how the, the, the two fights ago, he got taken down and within a millisecond of being taken down comically, had a Kimura that like the guy screamed from and like that, that doesn't happen like that. The armbar that you just referenced, dude, like that's not real. Um, and if it is shame on the guy for getting armbar like that, he, like, I, I, I don't think he's real. I don't think he's faced any real competition. I don't think those fights were real. Um, and like you said, at least like on the other side, Bruno has a pulse. He's an actual human. He's actually not going to be paid to lose. And he does pretty much all of the right stuff. So, and, and then look at Bruno's record. He's fought good people, good competition. Um, man, that alone, forget about technical analysis, just that he, he's a warm human. Then that said, I, I wasn't huge on, on Bruno for the RoboCop thing because I thought RoboCop was just going to be more technical and would be able to not get chinned. And I was wrong. Um, but... Bruno does, he's not amazingly technical, high guard, he moves lateral, he, he covers up, he, he fires in, in the pocket, he'll mix his wrestling, he's got decent jujitsu, you know, he's powerful, he's good all around. So man, bet, mortgage the house, bet it all on Bruno, we're done here. <laughs> Oh, geez. Maybe not good advice. <laughs> Mortgage the house, the car, sell the plasma, whatever you have to do here. Um, who is it that I said that to before? Was it Carlos? Carlos um, Hernandez. Hernandez. <laughs> and that was a close fight on that one with Alta Murano. Um, yeah, I know you hate it when I say stuff like that. But, yeah, uh, I hate it when anybody says I stuff know, like that. Because that used to be me. It used to be me. I know I'm kind of joking. I, I'm somewhat joking on that, but I do think that this is, I think this is very heavily dominated by Bruno Fedeta. Um, yeah. So, all right, next up we've got Benoit St. Denis, Dennis and Ismail Bonfim. Um, am I up? Are you up? Uh, go ahead on this one. So, man, I, I thought McKinney was going to expose Bonfim and not that Bonfim wasn't, good but i thought mckinney with his you know explosiveness and that wrestling was going to be able to do something nothing 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 bonfin passed every freaking test that said i mean we know mckinney is mckinney he is boom or bust we know that but bonfin does everything well he did everything perfect in that fight his cardio is good his striking is clean he mixes his knees up defensive wrestling is good everything is top notch and I've been very critical with of St. Denis before of him death gassing. And I think he took his UFC debut on short notice, and that was at 170. And he fought a really good Zaleski, who, honestly, that fight should have been stopped in the second round. But 
He was actually really good everywhere. But watching St. Denise's last two fights, he actually cage wrestles really well. And once he gets to the ground, his jujitsu in ground and pound and kind of cage grappling is actually really, really good. Um, I, I actually like him more as a fighter after watching tape than I did, you know, in previously. He's slow. He does not have great stand-up, but he hits hard. He's down to throw, and, and he'll do some spinning shit. Um, I, you know, who wins it? I really think this is a Bonfin fight. Uh, but that said, the only thing that worries me, and I'm curious about, and I'm not, it's not making me change my mind, but I am, my thought process on it, I think Dennis is going to be a lot bigger than uh, Bonfin. And I, I wonder, um, McKinney is not a great cage wrestler, but St. Denis is a good cage wrestler. And I'm curious to see if the size, uh, if he can close the distance in round one and really wrap uh, Bonfin up and get him to the ground and do some stuff. I'm curious to see if he's going to have some success. So I, I, I really like Bonfin here. Um, but I'm curious to see how he handles the size because I think once Bonfin goes up in competition, it's going to be the size that's going to be a big factor because he is not the biggest lightweight. And I'm curious to see if when he fights those big lightweights, if he has a hard time with it. Yeah, I mean, he's. I just looked because I, I I didn't know that he he's listed at five foot eight and Saint Denis listed at five foot eleven. And man, I I just I hate uh, Saint Denis tape. His pre UFC tape is awful, awful, awful. Getting so tired, shooting awful shots, and he's looked a lot better in the UFC, right? I, I picked Stolzi mm -hmm. against him, and that wasn't a good decision. So did I. Uh, yeah, um, it's looked a lot better, but I, I, I still don't believe him, and I don't believe him yet. I still think he's got bad cardio, especially against anyone who can defend a takedown. Um, his striking is rough, and the dude takes a beating. Um, but I, I, I feel like this might be one of those fights that you get extremely frustrated, right? You have a big high number on uh, Bonfim expecting him to kill St. Denis and St. Denis is just wet blanket, like uh, Claire Guthrie. Claire Guthrie is like the worst female fighter in the world, but she just like is just there and kind of on you enough throwing stupid rabbit punches that she wins fights. And that's what I, I worry about could happen here. Now that you're talking about the size and the grappling and the wet blanket, um, man, I, you know, thinking all week, the last few weeks or since the fight was announced, I'm like, Bonfim is going to murder this guy. And now I'm just having flashbacks to fights like those, where it's just that, that guy that won't go away. Um, so I'm still going to go Bonfim here, but, um, you know, I'm not going to get carried away with this position here. Yeah. Um, all right. Let's go. We've got Ariane Lipsky and Melissa Gatto. And this was the one woman's fight my wife would let me tape. Okay. So it's the only one. So, so I'll, I'll get to that. And I was actually talking with one of the fighters who's on the discord, Derek Flores, um, earlier about this. And, and one he was saying, he was making, uh, he's like, I've never made more money betting than I have on the discord through the tennis channel. And he goes, I make more money through the tennis channel than anything else. And I was like, nice. Um, and we were talking, Oh, I just kicked my, uh, desk, made us all wobbly, but, uh, and, and then we we're, you know, talking about this week's UFC and I said, Hey, I played, um, this last week's barber, you know, I picked Barbara and I picked Richie and they both hit cause we were talking about women's MMA is like, it always kills me. And I said, Hey, I, I did that. And you know, it was a dog and whatever. They were good plays. And he goes, no, whenever I see you put a woman down I know to play it because you never talk about the women and that's actually this here the the other two women's fights on the cards they just don't interest me and so I'm like eh, I'm not taping them whatever but this one I know both of these girls well and so I wanted to tape it because Tracy fought Melissa Gatto this is the famous not not famous 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 by any means but like inside joke of <laughs> fuck her jujitsu take her down and beat her ass um, against Melissa Gatto with Tracy. And then Ariane Lipsky has come and trained with us before up at Fight Ready. And so, so we know her. We've seen her fight. The J.J. Aldrich fight, we saw that. I mean, she, all of us were on J.J. to get the takedown. And Ariane looks great and, and defended it, all of that stuff. So, so this one I actually did tape. Um, <clears throat> and Ariane looked good against J.J. But J.J.'s hands are not great. Her shots she would get these really good entries 
and then just stop. And then she wasn't running through her shots. She wasn't chain wrestling. And she was being very, gosh, just wasn't mixing anything up. It, it, was, it was a very poor f- performance by JJ. Um, and then uh, uh, Gato, she, I remember when she uh, weighed in with Tracy and they did the face off. Her arms have got to be my length. I mean, they are, well, she's jacked. And she's got 20 feet arms. I mean, th- those things are crazy. She's long. She grabbed Tracy and just threw her down a couple of times um, on the ground, took her back. She is just a good physical specimen as a female. Um, she doesn't have the striking of Lipsky. Don't get me, you know, don't get me wrong. But, and, and she actually, uh, she'll throw a one-two. And what she does a lot is when she throws her one-two, she drops that left hand so low that she can get countered over the top, but she is long. And I think her striking is decent enough. And although Ariani's tape is, or yeah, Lipsky's tape is she, or uh, nickname is the queen of violence. Like striking wise, she's not like knocking girls out to death and all of this. I, I think Gato's just got to get her hands on Lipsky a couple of times. And she is dragging that fight to the ground in submitting Lipsky. I really like Melissa Gatto here, um, and, and I think she's just going to be too big and physical. And she just, I mean, look at uh, Gatto when she took Tracy down. She shot in and went straight to her back. She didn't try to American wrestling her. She went jujitsu cage wrestling on it, um, dragged her down, did all the right stuff. So I, I like Gatto here. Yeah, I, I got no more to say on that one. I, I didn't take this one. I do know these girls relatively well. But I'm going to leave that one up to you. I'll, I'll rock with Gato, too. Okay. Next up, we have Max Griffin and Michael Marralas. What do you got? Who do you got? Who's winning? Yeah, it appears that, uh, that Griffin is dog of the week. And, you know, if you, if you let me look at this card and peruse this thing early in the week, too, I probably would have been in the same spot. Um, I, I think Morales is overrated. Not not that he's not talented, but he's overrated, I guess, as the prospect that people were were talking about that he is. But at the end of the day, uh, he beat what's that dude, Varetnikov? Uh, geez, that Russian kid that I really really liked uh, on Contender Series. Uh, yeah, yeah Varetnikov uh, yep, beat Varetnikov. Trevin Giles and then Adam Fugit. All all of those guys are like decent. Guys, they all have their own little things about them that make them really, really decent, right? Chevin Giles has good boxing, just a good ultra vet, does a lot of things well. Vretnikov, tough wrestler, just kind of a strong dude in your face. And then Fugit, has high volume, toughness, right? And he beat all those guys. Um, Morales striking is a little bit wide. It's almost like his hands are disconnected from his, his legs. Like it's just two parts of his body moving at different times. He's a little bit wide, uh, but... I think he's going to win again here. Um, when he shows the grappling, it's clean. He is a very good wrestler. He, he lifts guys on the, off their feet constantly. He's dragging them down. Man, his cardio's held up really well. He's looked clean. Um, Griffin hits hard, and Morales does get hit. So I, I understand the people saying, like, that's the angle is uh, Griffin KO, and he's got power, and he can make this close. And I, I absolutely believe Griffin can make this close. But I think this younger, faster, more athletic man um, – Technique aside, because Griffin's not the most technical guy on on the earth either. Um, I, I think I think this is a spot for Morales to shine and show people that uh, that he really is the future and he is that that talent. Um, I wish he could be a little bit tighter and a little bit cleaner with the things that he does, but um, I think the age is going to be. Uh, this is the young man's game in this fight. See, I'm. This is pro- one of the fights I've spent the most tape on, and the one that I'm most torn on. And generally, that's those are the fights I do spend the most tape on because I'm trying to find a read and an angle somewhere. And so I'm like, I keep digging and digging and digging and digging. And my issue with Michael Morales is he lets other people dictate the fight. He lets like, Oh, we're going to strike. So he's just okay. Striking with whatever happens or we're going to wrestle ah, whatever. Like you don't know. He doesn't try to win a fight until he gets hurt. And when, when you rock him or something bad happens to him, and he just reacts. Oh my gosh, it's beautiful. He is just takes you down, swings, goes, clipping people. That's it. But when you don't, he just is okay with whatever happens. And he, even in the striking department, he's not out there forcing the situation. He's kind of like, all right, 
whatever happens. He stands in the mirror. He waits to find a counter. He lets you go. He's not throwing, creating the counter. He's not pressing, creating the volume. He's not in your face. He's not actively wrestling. He's just okay with whatever happens. And I think that's why he got hurt and rocked with Giles. Um, you know, and it's just, that's why I can't, he, he's almost too nonchalant in there. And I think that's going to catch up to him at some point. Max Griffin on the other side, <clears throat> he's actually good everywhere. Like there's not a single like massive flaw in that dude's game. I mean, he's, uh, he's old. I mean, there's that his cardio is decent. He has a, you know, good stance. And, and what he does really well is he moves laterally. He just gets people to chase him, gets people to chase him, and then knifes, punches in as they do, and he hits hard and he times stuff well. He will wrestle. He will defensively wrestle. He does everything well. And, and then it just comes down to, like, I could see him lulling. I, I actually see Max winning a decision if he wins, and I see Morales by finish if he wins. And, you know, putting on my Nostradamus you know, fortune teller had over here. If Max does just enough to like touch him and move and just kind of won't die. I, I actually see him steal in this fight from Morales. If he hurts Morales or somehow pisses him off or something weird happens and Morales just goes send and just starts swinging on it. I see Morales just finishing him, catching him, clipping him. Um, I really am a hundred percent torn on this fight. Um, I think Max is a good dog here. And if you want to play that, go there. I kind of like the idea that a that the younger up and coming kid is gonna find a way to win. Like I, I lean that with nothing more than I think the younger kid who's supposed to be the talent is gonna be the talent. Um but I wouldn't be surprised to see Max Griffin steal this one. I, yeah, I'm with you. I think I think Morales is going to have to wrestle him and wear him down and grind him to for, for me to get this fight. That's how I think it's going to go and get Max a little bit tired, a little bit sick of standing up and then then pull up with the strikes. But yeah, like I said, I, if I had to choose a dog, I mean, Max Griffin, I think, is going to be the one that makes this fight the closest. And that usually yeah. means he's going to get KO'd round one. Yeah. Um, I don't know, man. You, you know, you look at him, he beat Ramiz, um, who's not amazing but he's tough and i mean it says elbow ear injury man he was beating ramiz that whole fight ramiz whatever um knocked out keenan song beat an age carlos condit lost to neil magny beat an age tim means um dude he's he's beating these guys but he's beating guys who are slower and aren't that dynamic anymore so um all right next up we have demir Magulov and grant dawson um I don't even think this is a close fight. And I know everyone is, people are going to think I'm crazy here because, you know, Grant Dawson beat our guy, Mark Madsen. Mark Madsen is an Olympic silver medalist, Greco Roman wrestler. Now, Mark was supposed to fight Drakkar close. Um, and then about 10 days out, Drakkar got hurt and they switched it to Grant Dawson. Those two fights are so different, it is insane. And Mark is not used to uh, – Drakkar is an upper body, Greco, kind of double leg type of guy. Grant Dawson is a hang on you, single leg, look at Mateus Gamera. And we, we actually drilled that. We, I said, look, Grant is going to shoot. He's going to switch to a single. He's going to switch that high grip, pull you backwards, try and take the back and run it. And that's exactly what he did. Um, and we're, he's going to throw a body triangle. And that's exactly what he did. We had like two days of repping that before Mark fought. I mean, so it, it was such a switch in game plan. Um, and then Grant is going against um, Demir Ismagula. And first of all, Grant missed weight by like five pounds. All right. So there's that. Um, Demir is going to be able to, first of all, he's longer and he's a much more comfortable striker than Mark Madsen is. And he's a good wrestler and he is comfortable defending single legs and like chain leg wrestling. He doesn't get tired. He has phenomenal cardio. I think Demir is going to really have a very good performance over Grant Dawson on this one. 
Yeah, there's been a there's been a lot of weird stuff with this one. Um, one, the retirement and then coming back and retirement coming back with with Demir, which was a weird thing, and I think he was just frustrated more than anything. And then uh, the line movement has been a little bit insane. And well, then explain you know, that. that. Explain the line. Explain the line movement because I'm not familiar with well, it. Demir, explain it to everyone. D- all right. If you stop saying it, I'll explain it. Um, Demir opened a, a big favor. I think it was like minus 210 or minus 220. And now the line is about to flip where Demir is about to be an underdog. <laughs> and, you know, in, inside the Discord and the chat, people are saying, oh, they train together. And that's why. And appa- apparently Demir, he's at a syndicate now. He's at syndicate, not ATT, where Grant is at ATT. But... I, I'm just watching this, and I remember Demir being kind of slow. Demir looks good, man. He it, it's really hard to uh, t- to look at Dem- Demir in the way that he fights and be like, man, this guy has has holes. He defends takedowns well. He's high volume, good jab, always in your face. Like the guy is just clean and beautiful. And uh, I, I think I think a lot of uh, of this line and the stock is going into that retirement stuff and the weirdness with Demir coming back and, and honestly how good Grant looked in his last fight. But you know, you, you look at the film, Grant gets so tired. If he doesn't get what he wants, his striking is a little slow and clunky on the feet. Although he is a little bit of a destroyer, right? He'll keep marching forward and, uh, and, and pressing. But one thing I worry, just like the, the St. Denis fight is that, that Dawson's just on him so much. He's just racking up time, just time. Not like he's doing damage, but just time pressing, being on him and making Demir fight him off. But at the end of the day, man, I really like Demir's volume. His jab is just something of legend. He is just a veteran's veteran. Um, you know, I'm, I'm willing to be wrong in the spot, especially at such a close line. And please let this line flip so I can play a little Demir as an underdog. A day that I never really thought thought would come. You know, I did play Armin against him, but that's top of the division, right? I uh, I, I like Demir in this spot. I think I think Dawson's going to get tired. And Demir is, is so good at defending that stuff. So uh, I'll take some Ismagulov. Love it. Uh, main event time. Main event time. Time to go. Um, the We have Sean Strickland and Abus Megamedov. This, like, this is another fight. I'm like, what the hell are they doing? Sean Strickland is doing so, I mean, much for the division. He is a workhorse in, in this division. Um. Took on Imavov in short notice, you know, fought Cannoneer, Pareda, Hermanson. He's fought who's who. He's entertaining. He's a Vegas guy. The UFC likes him. And, and he's going against uh, Abbas Magomedov, who's good and seasoned and has done it, but has only has one fight in the UFC for a main event. Do you know what the push is here, what the play is here? I can't figure it out. If it's like, Hey, let's give Strickland an easy one. And that's the only guy who would accept the fight. Or if it's like, no, 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 we know how good Abus is. Let's, let's let him put on a showcase. Yeah. You've got to assume it's, we know how good Abus is. We're trying to put on a showcase and, and grow a guy for the division because, um, Izzy Strickland's has cleaned had out chance. the division. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, maybe they're looking for newcomers, but, um, I don't know. It's just weird to me that they that they do that with somebody who's untested, not even untested, but untested in the UFC and hasn't had enough eyes on him. And that now all of a sudden you're going to kill one of your your main guys in the division who you can always count on. So it's just a weird one. Um, I kind of think we've already seen this fight play out a little bit with Strickland, Strickland, I'm of Um, You know, I, I think it's. Strickland is is pressing in the volume, and then uh, Abus is going to try to keep some range and, and mix in the wrestling. Uh, I think, man, I I kind of like Strickland here in this spot. And, and my thing is, Abus, everybody talks about his wrestling. Everyone thinks, oh, his wrestling, his wrestling, his wrestling. And, and in one of his last fights, he got taken down, just out-timed and, and got put on his ass. And he responded well, but... I think his wrestling is good and it looked good against uh, Sabadu Sai and some other guys who are just like have never wrestled a day in their lives. Um, but Strickland does all the right stuff. Um, he's in your face. I wish Strickland had a little bit more power to really to press and, and to scare a boost. 
Um, I, I'm going to go Strickland here in a very close fight. I think it's going to be very similar to the um, Imovov fight and where it's going to be like three rounds to two, close split decision. It's kind of volume right there. I think we've already seen this play out, but I think Imovov is a little bit better than Abus. I think I like him better than Abus. Um, I think he's a little more dynamic. I think Abus's cardio is a little bit better, but I think Imovov is a little scarier than Abus is. Um, you know, I, I don't think it's going to be an amazing fight. I think it's just going to be a volume fight. Jeez, after uh, after that performance Imovov put on against Chris Curtis, I mean, how how good does that win look for for Sean Strickland? And it's crazy watching Strickland. We talk about this every time. He just looks so ugly when he does it. His chin's up. He's reaching for every punch, but somehow he's always there. He's he's clean. He barely ever gets hit. He puts volume together. Man, he's a wrecking ball in like like the least finishing way possible. But he is kind of a wrecking ball, especially when he starts opening up and and really throwing those punches. I mean, they look hard and. He gets people, you know, moving back with the power, but just can't seem to find the finish. Um, I, I think this fight is is is, you know, either a boost early, right? He's going to catch that that knockout, uh, like Pereira did, right? As Sean's reaching, or I mean, man, trying to beat Strickland in a five round fight is a is a tough proposition for for anybody. Just with the pressure, uh, honestly, just generalship. I mean, the dude knows how to fight. All he does all the time is fight. Rarely is he improving and adding new techniques. He's just fighting. And that kind of experience is invaluable. So for me on a close to even line, I think on some places he's minus 130 now. How can I go against the guy that's just been all reliable for so long? And the only time he's been knocked out recently, I guess, is against freaking uh, Alex Pereira, like world champion kickboxer with insane power. But you know, we're, we're looking over five rounds. Give me, give me Sean Strickland at an even line. That's, that's a, that's a good bet for me. Yeah. Uh, that's it. That's all we got. Anything else before we take off here? I think that's it. That's all I got for you guys. Midday. Midday, man. I like it. I like this midday one. I'll get this up. Um, what is it? Tuesday afternoon. This will get up probably sometime tonight, uh, Tuesday night, Wednesday morning, depending on when, when editing and everything takes place. Um, Man, next week, you're going, what, to Hawaii? When do you take off to Hawaii? I will be leaving for Hawaii on Friday, and then I won't be back until July 10th. It's going to nice. be a while. That'll be a while. And then we've got uh, Kamuela Kirk is fighting next week up there in um, fight week uh, against Estevan Rybovic again. And then uh, so we'll get some stuff out. I'll keep getting uh, – some more plays out early as early as I can, and we will see you guys next time. Happy betting.